Greetings, everybody. My name is Patrick Griffin from Acts 29 Ministry, working together with Danny Contreras from Keys to Life. And this is the fourth in a series of short videos on church history and the end times. And in today's lesson, we will be looking at the biblical expression of thief in the night in connection with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who repeatedly in scripture is described as coming like a thief in the night. We will continue to rely upon our method of basing our knowledge on what the verses themselves are saying, not on what a teacher is saying about the verses. We will continue to repeat with emphasis that we must not allow a teacher to get between us and the Bible. We want our knowledge of God's Word to rely on direct observation so that again the proper role of the teacher is to the side assisting us in making a direct and organized encounter with what the verses are saying about themselves and with what the verses are saying about one another, carefully comparing scripture with scripture rather than just allowing ourselves to uncritically absorb theological stories that we may have grown up hearing and passing on to our children and grandchildren ideas about the Bible and the teachings of the Bible concerning the future and the coming of Christ that we have not taken the time to carefully search out and verify for ourselves by direct observation of Scripture. This is a labor of love, not an attack on any person, and we are urgently appealing all listeners to carefully look, search out these verses, to carefully listen to what these verses are actually saying, regardless of what we may have been preconditioned to think about the biblical teaching surrounding events concerning the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to begin today's reading with Revelation chapter 16 verse 15 in which Jesus Christ our Lord speaks in the midst of a passage that is describing the battle of Armageddon. The Lord Jesus says in verse 15, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. What I want to call attention to here is that Jesus has clearly told us when he comes as a thief, whoever is found not watching, not ready, will be left unclothed with all of the awfulness of unwashed sin fully exposed. And he warns that those not found watching will be left naked with their shame wide open for all to see. So comparing this with 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we want to read verses 2 through 6, our key verse is 4. This is Paul writing to the church of the Thessalonians, and beginning with verse 2, he says, For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. There again is our expression. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. Here's a key verse, verse four. But you brethren are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Now this is interesting because here the verses have plainly told us that the coming of Jesus Christ like a thief in the night is not a reference to how that day will be experienced by those who are in Christ, by those of the church. He says, again, reading for emphasis, you brethren are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. The expression of Christ coming like a thief in the night is a reference to how that day will be experienced by the world of the unsaved, not by the church. For us, he will come as a long-awaited and eagerly expected bridegroom, not as a thief in the night. Now, continuing with the passage, verse 5, You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the darkness nor of we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. And this lines up squarely with the warning that Jesus gave in Revelation chapter 16, verse 15, that blessed is he who watches. 
and why would we be told to watch unless we are going to be here on the day when Christ comes in flaming fire to fully expose the shame of the unforgiven sin in the world of the unsaved. So our message to the unsaved needs to be not a backdoor way of getting out of the urgency of the message for today by implying that there will be opportunities for salvation after the return of Christ for the church. We need to emphasize the urgency of the message that today is the day of salvation. And when Jesus Christ returns for the church, there will be no opportunities ever for anyone to be saved. We don't want to be found guilty of not having carefully searched out ideas that we have heard and putting them to the test of the scripture. The popular expression that the coming of Christ like a thief in the night <clears throat> is referring to the sudden silent snatching away of the church is nowhere supported by any direct readings of the Bible. It is an idea that is loaded into the verses by those who have been conditioned to believe that this is what the Bible teaches. So we want to recognize the difference between having knowledge of the Bible and having knowledge of a theology about the Bible. Everything has to be put to the test of direct observation in scripture. And reading now from Matthew chapter 24, verses 43 and 44, uh, in, with, with a view to what we have already looked at concerning the expression of thief in the night, in connection with the return of Jesus Christ, how this day will not come upon the church as a thief in the night, but this again is an expression for how that day will be experienced by the world of the unsaved. You brethren are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Matthew chapter 24, very important verses here for our study today. Verses 43 and 44, Jesus said, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Let's pay very close attention to how the Lord Jesus worded this warning. He is saying that it is not a good thing to be caught by a thief, and only those who are not found watching will be caught as, like, as by a thief. Those who are found watching will not be caught as by a thief. Never in the Bible is it presented that it is a good thing to be struck by a thief. And we do not want to be those who experience the coming of Jesus Christ like a thief in the night. That is how that day will be experienced by the world of the unsaved. And I would like to conclude our study for today by reading from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, in which again, the scripture uses the expression of Christ coming like a thief in the night. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 reads, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and what's going to happen? In which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. So here once again, the word of God, by basing our knowledge on direct observation of what the verses themselves are saying, is telling us in language so clear and simple that a child could understand. When Jesus Christ returns like a thief in the night, it is not a secret silent event in which all the Christians disappear and the world of the unsaved still has opportunity to come to Christ for salvation. It says that when he comes like a thief in the night, it is not a secret silent event, but comes with a loud noise. Here's the teaching of the Big Bang, not at the beginning but at the end when he comes like a thief in the night that is the end of history that is the day of resurrection and judgment and in lessons one through three we have taken the time to carefully read 
in simply worded verses and urgently appeal to all listeners to verify this knowledge by direct readings from Scripture. Again, regardless of what we have heard and what we have absorbed by growing up surrounded with popular teachings about a rapture of the church before the tribulation and multitudes of people getting saved after Christ returns for the church, please, we urge you in the love of Christ and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to put those ideas to the test of Scripture. Have you ever actually read anything like that in the Bible? So again, concerning today's study, in summary, we have looked at the expression of Christ's coming like a thief in the night, and we have seen by direct readings of Scripture from Revelation 16, 15, from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 2 through 6, from Matthew chapter 24, verses 43 and 44, and 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Out of the many others which we could have selected from, we have seen clearly, consistently, and transparently in these verses that the expression of Christ coming like a thief in the night is a reference to how that day will be experienced by the world of the unsaved. We who are eagerly waiting for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ do not know the day or the hour, but through discerning the signs of the times outside of us and by the movement of the Spirit of Christ within us, we will be found watching and ready when he comes. We will not be caught as though by a thief. The return of Christ for us will be the experience of the return of a long-awaited and eagerly expected bridegroom. We say these things to you in love and we urge you to verify from the scripture everything that has been said and let's be careful with repeating ideas that we have heard from others without carefully putting them to the test of scripture. We love you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and God bless you in the holy name of his son.